Hello, future Earthlings. This is HP Bob Kamebel here, and today I've got for you another awesome computer craft program. Let's take a look. So, this is a program which I have shown to you before, but it got a major upgrade, so I will be redoing the entire video. So, if you haven't seen it before, then that's okay because you won't be missing anything. So, first, what you're going to want to do is get yourself an advanced computer and place it down. Then open it up and type pastebin get the code in the description and then a name. You can call it whatever you want, but when you run it, the program will automatically rename itself to AP for Advanced Paint, uh, for reasons of things. And um, after you've downloaded it, all you gotta do is uh, hook up some monitors and you can start painting yourself a beautiful picture. So you do need to use advanced monitors, um, because those are the ones that respond to touch. Um, but they don't have to be touching the computer. This one over here is pretty far, but all I have to do is hook it up with some wired modems. And to do that, you just place one on one of the blocks of the monitor, because they're multi-blocks. And then uh, run the cable up to the computer, and put one on the computer. Make sure to turn on the one that is on the monitor. You don't have to turn on the one that's touching the computer, but I do just because I feel like it. So now both these monitors are going to work with the program because this one's touching the computer. See, this block is right next to it. And this one's hooked up with a wired modem. So, yeah. So now I'm going to run the program, and if you just type AP, it'll tell you what you can do with it. And to create a new file, you have to type AP Edit and then a name. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, so I'll call it new, because it's new. You can rename them uh, in the console of the computer, but my program doesn't do that. So it says this file doesn't exist, so it's going to be created, and disconnect any monitors that you don't want included. Now the reason it says that is if you disconnect a monitor after saving this file, then it'll say, oh, you're missing a monitor, and that could be bad, because it might be part of your picture that you made. And you don't want to lose part of your picture now, do you? So it, uh, you have to make sure that you only have the monitors that you want um, connected to the computer. So now after you run it, uh, it'll look something like this. You get some white backgrounds on your monitors. And on the computer, you'll have this color selector kind of thing. And a few other buttons, I'll show you those in a minute. So the color selector is pretty simple. You just click on the pixel that has the color, and this little like arrow here shows you which one is selected. The arrows on the bottoms show you the possible colors, and that's because like white here, it you know it's the same as the background. You don't really know it's there unless that arrow is there. So uh, yeah, so if I select white, nothing's gonna happen because I'm just drawing white. But I can select let's say blue, which might be my favorite color. And I can draw on this monitor if I want. I can draw on this monitor. But two monitors? That's boring. Let's add another monitor. So to add another monitor, all I gotta do is just connect it, like that. And as soon as it touched the computer, the whole thing turned white, because the computer recognized it. So now I can draw on this one. And yeah, that's the basics of the program. So now the other buttons in here, um, this one is clear mode, and if I click that, then it says clear mode is on, touch a monitor to clear it, and let's say I don't like this drawing, so I'll just right click that, boom, it's gone. So when you're done clearing the monitors, make sure you hit done, or else, you know, you'll just keep clearing them instead of drawing on them. Uh, then this other button here, change util monitor, that stands for change utility monitor. And it says, touch monitor to select it, and it has to be at least two by two blocks. And I'll just add a monitor over here, just for fun. And it has to be two by two blocks. And you'll see why this is so cool. Did I mention that it's cool? Because it is. So I'll just connect these. So now this monitor is connected to the computer. And I just have to turn on this wired modem by right clicking it. And as soon as it connects, the computer recognizes the monitor and makes it white. So right now, 
if I don't have um, change util monitor on, I can just draw on this like any other monitor, you know, I can just draw on any of them. But if I have change util monitor on, then when I right click it, it turns into this, which is pretty cool, I think. It allows you to change the color on a monitor instead of having to go into the computer, which is just, you know, that's not fun. Who likes to do that? And let's say I want to draw on this monitor again. Well, that's okay. I'll just hit Change Util Monitor, which is also an option on there. And I can't make it this one because this one's too small. It has to be two by two blocks at least. But this one's big enough, so I'll just choose this one. And you can see it doesn't get rid of the image. And what I drew on here, it's still here. See? So you can move this around as you're drawing and you really only need two monitors to use this one to draw on and one to use the uh... the, th the thing I don't actually know what to call this um... I, yeah, I'll think about that so from this you can also use clear mode so I can just clear that monitor or clear that monitor or this monitor I can't clear this monitor just know that you can't paint or do anything on this monitor like when it has the uh, selector on it. So if I did want to edit this, I would have to change it to either of these two, because these are both at least two by two. See? So I'll just change it over there. And now I can clear this one. And the last button that I have yet to show you is save and exit. Now there's also a save and exit here. They're in a little bit different order, just because I like how these like go in size order. On here it's on the bottom, but it's the same button. I can either hit it on here, or I can hit it here. And all the monitors, they go black because the program has saved it. And now I could edit it again by typing in AP Edit New. And it comes back. Of course there's nothing there because I, you know, I just went through and cleared everything. But let me just show you real quick that it actually does save it. Okay, so I quickly drew on all the monitors, and now if I hit save and exit here, or on there, well, it wasn't there, but it could have been on the uh, color selector thing, then when I run the program again, boom, all the uh, drawings that I did are back. So yeah, that's pretty simple. And the last feature of this program is draw. So I could type AP draw and new and it says new is currently being displayed and it has the exit button and now I can't draw on any of the monitors and it'll just sit here. This is to display the image and when I'm done I just hit exit. So there's just one more thing that I want to show you guys and that would be how to move the computer after you've created like a drawing and you want to like show it to everyone, but you don't want the computer to be like obvious. So first, what I'm going to do is make a picture. So I'll just type AP Edit New, and I deleted the old file that I was using, so I'll recreate it, and I'll just quickly draw on all the monitors just for fun. And now I'll hit Save and Exit, and so, in this example, I'll be moving the computer from right there to here. And I could move it anywhere. I could move it 100 blocks in that direction, as long as everything was still connected with wired modems and network cabling. But I don't really feel like going 100 blocks away, so I'm just going to put it behind this monitor. So first thing that I need to do is label the computer by typing label set and a name. It can be anything. So I'll call it paint computer. Boom. Now when I break it, it'll drop an um, it'll drop the item. See? And it's actually called paint computer. And now I'll just go over here and I'll stick it right there. Looks pretty good. I'll connect it again to the wired modems, or to the network cabling with a wired modem. And that way it can talk to that monitor and that monitor. And this one doesn't need a wired modem because it's touching it. 
so all the monitors are connected. Now the computer is not going to see any difference in this monitor or this monitor, but since it's a different side that this monitor is touching, see before it was the top and now it's the back of the computer, the computer will say, oh, one of the monitors disappeared and all we have to do is tell it that it's just right here, the back of the computer. So I'm going to type AP edit and the name was new and it says a monitor is missing and it's the top monitor and we know that because it says top that's the side of the computer um, and the size is 71 by 12 and this monitor right here happens to be 71 pixels by 12 pixels so that way you know how big the monitor is that went missing and I'll just say choose another to permanently take its place because I'm gonna leave the computer here and that way if I permanently choose a monitor to take its place then it will automatically know that this is the monitor that it should be using instead of looking for one on top so I'll just hit 2 on the keyboard and it says touch a monitor to replace top permanently and I'll just touch this one and everything is redrawn exactly as it was. The only difference is the computer is now over here. And this is going to make it really obvious why this utility thing is handy, just in case you don't have easy access to the computer. So I have it over there, but I can still change the color, I can still clear monitors, and all that good stuff. I do have to access the computer to start the program again, but that's not a huge deal. But I'll just show you again, now that I've permanently chosen this monitor, it won't be looking on top anymore. It'll be looking on the back of the computer. And I guess real quickly I'll show you how I could move a monitor, just in case. But if you get the idea, then you don't have to keep watching, but if you're still a little confused about this, then I'd recommend keep watching. So I'll close the program uh, because if you actually move any of the monitors like remove any of the cable or delete a monitor if you do that during like while the program is running um, the program does not notice. I will have to make it so that it like updates and says like oh you disconnected a monitor but it doesn't say that right now. Um, it says it in chat but that's obviously not my program. Um, so what I'm gonna do is turn off this modem, which I just did, and now the computer won't be able to see it anymore because the modem's off. And let's say I just want to move it over here. I don't really want a monitor made out of computers, so I'll just grab a monitor and hook these up, and I'll just turn it on while I'm here, and then I just gotta connect it over here. So now when I type AP Edit New it'll say a monitor is missing and it's monitor 1. Now it's not a side this time because well monitor 1 is connected it was connected with the network cabling but since it's not connected anymore it doesn't know where it went so I'll just say choose another to take its place this time that means the next time that I start the program it'll ask me this again so I'll just hit 1 and I'll just touch this monitor to let it know which one that I need it to use. And it doesn't work. Why didn't it work? Okay, I don't know why, but disconnecting the modem and reconnecting it allowed me to choose it. I have no idea why. I've found some weird things with the wired modems lately. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I don't know. but. In any case, um, as you can see, this one is now displaying what that one used to show. And I'll just switch it back. Since that was just temporary, when I disconnect this one and reconnect this one, the program's not going to say anything because this one's back and the program says, OK, everything's there again, and it doesn't have to have me replace any. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, there's still a few more things that I need to uh, program in, but um, I don't think I'll need to make a video on them. They shouldn't be 
too drastic of changes. So hopefully you understood what I was talking about in this video, because I don't know. I try to make it clear, but sometimes I don't. So if you have any questions, which I'm not surprised if you do, then go ahead and leave a comment. And if you find any bugs, then you can post those on the Computercraft forum link. I think I'm going to be using the Computercraft forum to document like bugs and stuff now. Uh, but that is all I have for you today, so I will see you all later.